Yes, I've been a game developer for six months now. Or rather, I resurrected the developer in me. Because a long time ago, when, when Adobe Flash was still a thing, <laughs> when the dinosaurs were just extinct, uh, I did some Flash games. Um, if you want to learn about that, I also made a video about it. I will link it in the description of the video. And now that the six months has passed, I wanted to make a little update video sharing my six biggest takeaways. For those who don't know me, I've been documenting this journey via those uh, devlogs from the very early Brekkies tutorial that I followed up until my own 3D prototype that I've developed so far. Yeah, if you are a starting developer, maybe this video will come in handy. So let me share you the six takeaways of my first six months as a solo developer. Also, don't you worry if you are not using Godot, I still think this video applies to basically any game engine. Enjoy the video. My first tip would be start small. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by the hundreds of tutorials out there. Not to mention the endless questions and ideas swirling around in your head. When you first start, try to ignore most of those. Just download Godot, start by simply adding a box, a world environment, a camera and then press that little play debug button. Get familiar with the engine first without overloading your brain with all those goals you will eventually achieve. Yeah, start small, pick a challenge with an achievable end goal, like opening a door, making a simple 2D game using existing assets, or following a beginner friendly tutorial that holds your hand and walks you through the entire process, like my latest tutorial video. Yeah, I really recommend that one, I'm not biased at all. And sure, it won't be your dream game, heck, it will probably look bad, but at least you'll have learned the basics. I made the mistake by wanting to model my own character in 3D and I basically quadrupled the challenge. There was just too much to learn, the animation, the rigging, the importing, so for me, I really narrowed down the scope and I made it way more realistic. Yeah, I spent lots of time on the 3D work and I'm more than happy that I threw it all away have fun assuming that this isn't your job you are probably doing this as a hobby so treat it like a hobby if something doesn't work don't stress out about it shift your focus to what excites you and what you enjoy most while having structure and focus on your project is important make sure that fun remains the heart of the process and when you are enjoying yourself things tend to flow more smoothly and you're more often successful and remember, there's no shame in killing your darlings. If you change your mind about an idea or a concept, don't feel obligated to stick with it just because you started there. Be flexible, adjust your workflow and your projects to strike the right balance between having fun and learning new skills. I truly believe that the journey itself should be as rewarding as the end result. Learn one thing at a time. I can't stress this enough, your first 10 projects in Godot won't be your dream project that you eventually will release, and that's okay. The goal early on is to create small prototype projects to familiarize yourself with specific tools and concepts. By focusing on smaller projects, you'll build a strong foundation without getting overwhelmed. To get you started, I will provide you a list of my recommendation of the key areas of Godot you should learn, alongside with some tutorial videos. I will leave the links of the videos in the description of this video. Learn about the basics of coding. If you are using Godot, GDScript is a great starting point. Don't get stuck there for too long though. Remember the first or the second rule, it still needs to be fun. So after watching your first tutorial video on coding, I suggest watching a video that makes you move things. And uh, you know, make a game, literally. So I suggest to continue with a beginner friendly game tutorial. Try the Brekkies 2D tutorial or a basic 3D game tutorial. Did I mention that my video is objectively good, not biased at all? You should, you should watch that, that one, yeah. My next tip would be to learn about Godot's uh, nodes, especially how physics and collisions work. Explore components, understand how reusable nodes and scripts can simplify your workflow. Follow a few tutorial videos on simple UI. Practice making menus, buttons for basic user interaction. One thing that I really enjoyed were animations to make those sprites animate, so go and search for the animation player. Learn how to animate characters and objects. Next would be the state machine, a crucial concept for managing character states. 
And last but not least, because those tips are way more than enough for six months, is to dive into behavior trees. Understand how to structure advanced AI systems. Tip number four, use AI. And oh wait, don't boo me just yet. I know, I know that not everybody is a fan, but let me explain. I am not saying that you should use AI to create the soul of your game, its concept, story or design. Your game needs a soul and that requires a human touch. AI is simply useless if you don't know what you're doing. But where it really shines is in answering questions and filling in gaps of your knowledge. For instance, when I didn't know what certain terms were called, asking like, how do I manage my character state? It led me to discover tools like the state machines and behavior trees. I've also used AI to get advice on folder layouts, debugging and more. Sure, AI isn't perfect and occasionally it gives you bad answers. But even those bad answers can spark new ideas. Treat it as a brainstorming buddy that never gets tired of your sh**. <laughs> While it's not a magic wand, it is a tool and a very helpful one. It would honestly be extremely difficult for me to go back to a workflow without AI. Next, mix it up. Mix it up to stay motivated. Game development can be tough, especially when you hit roadblocks. And trust me, I've been there staring at the screen. A screen full of broken code, feeling stuck and frustrated, and questioning if I'm even capable of pulling it off. Programming in particular has a way of making you feel dumb and incapable when things don't work out. But here's the truth, it's not that you are incapable, you're just burned out on a specific challenge. When you hit that wall, don't push yourself to keep grinding on the same task. Instead, mix things up, step away from the problem and reset your brain. Go back to the drawing board, explore gameplay ideas, sketch out some designs or dive into something completely different like creating pixel art characters or writing a story in a plain document. Also, don't forget to play some video games that are somewhat in the same area as your game. It really helps to get inspiration. Once you feel refreshed, you will often find that the challenge that you were stuck on doesn't feel so impossible anymore. Alright, the next and final tip, get feedback. I cannot stress it enough, get feedback. Game development is way more fun when you're not doing it completely alone. Having developer friends around to share ideas, ask questions and to talk about your project can make a world of difference. Game development can be an intense and technical experience, so adding a bit of human interaction helps balance things out. Getting feedback with others isn't just about improving your game, it's also about building connections. Sometimes just talking through a tricky problem with somebody can lead to new insights. And let's face it, showing off your progress and getting encouragement from fellow game developers also feels good. And if you are looking for such place, we've got a Discord. It's full of lovely people. We are not weird at all. All right, that's it. Those were the tips. I know that not everybody agrees with these kind of videos. So please let me know in the comment section what I did wrong, you know, but please be gentle. I'm very sensitive. If you want to see more of these videos or my own devlogs or tutorials, make sure to like, subscribe and do all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and I see you guys around in the next video or stream. Bye bye.